The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. My pleasure to be here. We're looking at the E mini, the 10 minute chart made a peak E and a nice spiral to the upside and then pull back very sharply. But it's still up 28. It's nice to hear 28 points up over the last week. It hasn't been much uh, of, of the upside. Um, but day is young and we need to get this. This is kind of if it was an ideal situation right now. Uh, the ideal situation that I would be looking at is exactly what we, we're seeing at this very moment. But it's happening in the first 30, 35 minutes of the session. That means all of the negativity needs to get out of the way over my show over the next uh, 45 minutes, 50 minutes or so. And by 11.30, there needs to be a very fresh Look at the upside. That's the way I'm looking at. All right, let's get go, let's get on with the show. And the show says that uh, whoops, the Dow. Oops, uh, uh, yeah, that's not the time to call me. Um, sorry about that. An overseas call. I don't often get those. Sorry about that. Can't take it. Um, yeah. So the TYX. I wanted to show you this. This is the 30-year T bond interest rate monthly. There was a high made, of course, the, the price changes is a continuous contract. So the price back in December of 2013 was 39.76, 3.976. The high today is 338.06. It's a leg E in the monthly chart with a target of that high that was made in 2013. It can go higher. There's no question about that. Of course, it can go high. It can go right into the uh, five, uh, the uh, 5.5 5 area. But at this particular point, we're looking at the the monthly chart in leg E. This is yields. The weekly chart in G slash C, with very good technicals. The stochastics at 92 percent. Remember, this is the opposite of say seven percent. Uh, as we saw uh, just now in the, uh, in the um, stochastic of some of the indices. <coughs> Excuse me. But what we are looking at here is that it's an leg D in the daily chart. MACD is strong. Stochastics at 86%. Nine period moving average way over the 14. The price way over both the nine and the 14 at 3.804. Now, let me put this into context. So I wanted to show you this chart. I want to do this quickly to get it out of the way. I don't want to overload my charts here. This is a leg, as I say, GCSC in the weekly chart. This is the, the, the cyan one is the five-year. The brown is the 10-year. And the white, let me see if I can click on white to show you where it is. White is way down. In other words, it's been a complete uh, 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 overtaking of the three by the 10 and the, and the five. <clears throat> and that's saying that we've got a breakout here in the cup and handle pattern. Is this a G or is it the only other uh, uh, um, wave count I can give it as an A, a brand new A? That says yields in the weekly chart could still go to a B, a higher B, and then a higher C, and then a peak D. I don't know. I'm keep, keeping it right now as a G, and we'll see, that, see what happens. Look what the effect has been on with the global timber and forestry ETF of the of the rise in interest rates, the rise in many other things, plus the slowdown economically around the world. You've got this gone more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside from the 200-period exponential moving average. That's the wood is the ETF for the timber, global timber and forestry ETF. And look. The Philadelphia Housing Index has come almost all the way back in the arch formation, the dreaded H. <clears throat> at 331.20, that was back in June 18th, week of the 18th, week of the 17th, uh, 331.20, I think it's smooth, yeah, 331.20, and the low so far today, middle of the week, is <clears throat> three, uh, 347.50. So it's still nicely above, but it's making the arch formation. So you can see that if you're looking at these charts alone, 
is telling you, <clears throat> yields are impacting the market, number one. Number two, the global uh, slowdown is measured very well here. 98.98 was the high back in somewhere around April of this year. And we're trading now at 64.71. That's a 30-point difference, 30%, right? Uh, around about there. And look at the Philadelphia Philadelphia Housing Index, 538.36. And I think that was back in April of last year. I think it was last year. Yeah, last year, 2021. Uh, May, May the week of the 14th, 538.36, and here we are in the 340s, 331 was the recent low. So there's just no question that the selling has been intense. And when I'm talking about closed workspace, <clears throat> when I'm talking about a rebound, I'm talking about, first we call it a bounce, because that's all we can do. We don't, so far it's not even a, a technically a bounce, but let's just go back to the Dow, INDU. Uh, it's given back a chunk. It's up 153. It was up at 29.659. It's now at 29.413. But this is exactly where, this is kind of what I would, if we didn't get that V-shaped turnaround yesterday, remember there was a second scenario that said there's still some weakness, but then there will be, uh, someone asked me about my, uh, when I talk about uh, the an earthquake and then the residual effect, the aftershock, what, how, how does that fit in? And what I've been saying is that I don't believe we're talking about a crash phase at this particular point. What I think we're talking about is just a relentless lower highs and lower lows selling pervades. And that's the reason why for subscribers to my opening call, we, we are still short from via the DOG from 33,300s in the Dow. But absolutely, we're trying to do some buying here to see if uh, there is enough of a, of a, a reflex rally and the reflex rally has 30,128 as the pink nine period moving average resistance and 30,518. And all that does is it gets back to this time last week. Actually, not even this time last week. Today is Tuesday. So that's Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Thursday, not even to Wednesday. We aren't even close yet to Thursday, the candle, the Roman candle from Thursday. So this is just an attempt to in a small way take small, um, uh, having a big cash position, but trying to get a maximize some kind of a bounce as we did in April. But I don't think that this can be a rally anything close to what we saw in April. This is more like um, a rebound from a very oversold level. And unless we get the QQQ, the NDX 100, trading at 277 right now to close. I, I can give it until tomorrow, but it has to hold 274 today. But if it's able at 277.15 to somehow have another burst of strength a little later on and make a new recovery high today, that augurs well at least for some rebound this week. So what are we looking at? So here's the other thing we were looking at, VX, VIX.X, the volatility index, and I'll get to many of the questions that we had. You remember I've been talking about this. I spoke about it on Friday about yesterday look at the declining chapter wave inside track repellent zone i'll talk about it when we return because that to me is a clue to say well, watch this closely if you get repelled the vix gets repelled that'll help the market that's what it needs i'll be back in a moment dow's up 165 s&p's up 29 we'll be right back Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. We're opening, we're, we're looking at Dow up 175, S&P up 31. If you look at the E-mini, let's just go there right now. This is starting a leg B. This right here should be the first real attempt at some kind of follow through having had a big bounce, a pretty decent pullback. And now we're going to see, is there going to be some kind of an arch formation right here like this? I'm going to stretch it out. I want to make it too, too narrow like that. And that using Chapman wave methodology, let's just say, at about uh, 10, what are we doing now? We're 10, uh, 19 a.m. in the morning. Somewhere around 10, I would put it at 10.43 to 10.52. There's a bounce that tries to tackle the 37.11, 200-period exponential moving average in the E-mini. It's at 36.98 right now. It's not good enough. It actually has to close there. And then sometime by 11.30, to noon time today, it has to get to the 37.23 area and then start to treat the whole area of 37.10s as a springboard to the upside. A break under 36.80 says, uh-oh, still not quite ready for prime time. Let's go back to the VIX index. So the high that was made back in January at 38.94 in the weekly chart of the VIX then the high that was made round about February the 26th or so of this year at 37.79. Then the high that was made at 35.64 round about May uh, uh, May the, the 3rd or so. How I always ask the question, how does the price that you're following know about diagonal lines? I can understand a horizontal line. Yeah, something hits 200 or hits 150 down at uh, 110, you say, oh, well, the old high was 150, it should go back. But how do you make up something that says 37, 36, 35, 32.88 yesterday? Look at that beautiful inside track diagonal. Uh, look, look, look at this. The two parallel lines, narrow channel. <clears throat> 
and you've got this inside track and it cannot close above the pink resistance line and it certainly can't close and hold above the green line. How does the price know to do this, to hit exactly over a year? I, it's just, I, my, my theory is that if you think of it as a tide, that the tide is going down and every bit of exuberance, that's an exuberance in the volatility index, negativity that is, that increases, but it can only increase to a certain, it's like an elastic band, it can only stretch so far. So wherever you start off with, is going to go that distance and then stall. Well, if that's the case, this is a really important moment. It's an important moment for the dollar, leg D in the UUP, leg C slash F, maybe one more little pop to the upside. If you're looking at the euro, if you're looking at the VIX index, having made a, P, a leg D, maybe a peak D today, so this is the exact moment that I was looking at to say, if there is a chance for a rally, that rally starts either Monday with a V-shaped recovery, so that the latter part of the of the session starts to see 150 to or, or more rally, not a pullback, that's what we had, but a rally, that would give you that V-shaped turnaround, or it has to be this... Um, aftershock that says it isn't an immediate aftershock, it's this kind of messy aftershock that sort of stumbles around and just, it, it's not one impact, it's just a bunch of impacts and that's what I think we're looking at. So the chances are, unless I'm wrong, that we've made a low, not the low, but a low and not a J low, but an A low. Yesterday, probably on Friday at the low there, but yesterday some of the indices went to a low low. And that by the end of the day, going into Wednesday, going into Thursday, is going to be the real test of strength. So I've taken a little time to talk about it in terms of Chapman Wave methodology, in terms of subscribers, how we've, what we've done, why we're still holding a very big cash position, <coughs> Excuse me. And why I would rather be aggressive with less money than spread it out and get too many positions. And that's the position we've got right now. All right, questions came in. Could where was the first one? S. Could I look at oil? USO. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just have another T. This doesn't go away, does it? So, oh, and thank you very much, uh, Gator. Uh, this is really uh, good information. I missed it by a fraction. I usually get these things. I missed it. Yes, you're absolutely correct. I'm calling this a leg F to the downside right now in the IWM daily chart. So now let's go back to right here. This is the USO. The USO is the United States Oil Fund LP. It's gone to a leg E to the downside. This is another reason why I think there's a chance to rally at this particular point, because if you look at the commodities, oil is a commodity. It has broken the most important sideways horizontal support level. It's trading at 60, uh, the USO is trading at 64. It's underneath the 68 level. If you look at crude oil itself, this is a continuous contract. Where did I type that? I'll type it back over here. has broken underneath, remember I said the 80, 83 level, if it ever gets under 83 and holds under 83, that is a negative. So crude oil, under all the conditions that we're looking at now, where you, you've got a heating crisis coming up in Europe, it's just all around the world, in fact. We are looking at crude oil breaking down. You're looking at my DBA, DB Agricultural Fund, breaking down. That is... Wheat, just look at this, does wheat. Made a peak G at the 200 period moving average, just pulling back a little bit. Look at soybeans. Made a peak E, pulling back some. Look at uh, corn. Holding quite nicely, but still pulling back from the G slash C at the top there. 
Look at soybean. Uh, sorry, I always say soybeans, but it's not. It's sugar. I just got to keep liquefying my throat. Sugar, number 11, continuous contract, holding okay, but underneath the 200-period moving average. So if I'm looking at the commodities, at both soft and hard commodities, there is a really, oh, let's look at natural gas. Natural gas, look at this, natural gas down on the 200-period moving average of 6.92. This is essentially saying to me, uh, yeah, this is essentially saying to me, within the context of any kind of rally, it, it behooves the market to see something come off the commodities to allow some kind of a rally in the market. We'll be back in a moment. Let's look at our chart, see if we got there. Very close, 3711. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I go to that little one little slide, get a peek deep, and it didn't do it very well. It just missed the 200 period moving average, so <laughs> what I've got this very close. Now, uh, going to the NG natural gas. Didn't realize that the throat would still be quite so scratchy. Uh, 6.894. This is the arch formation in the daily chart. Now, I have said that there's no other way I can count the weekly chart other than a peak B in that last move up. Now, this almost reminds me of the S&P, which made a peak B in the monthly. The only one to do it in the monthly. All the rest did anything from a D up to a G, which is exactly what you look for in a monthly chart to start pulling back. Well, this peak G, uh, sorry, this peak G right here back in June, then the pullback and the V-shaped recovery going to a slightly higher high over 10, 
Now it's at 6.89. I I can't call it anything else but a B. That could fail. It fails if natural gas doesn't have to close. It just has to pop under. If it slides under 5.355 in the continuous contract, that was the low of the week of the 8th of uh, July, that negates it. That says it's a B minus. <coughs> it's a failure, Pat. Very unusual, but it can happen. But it says... I've got to take some more water. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, there you are. What it is saying is that within the context of this rally, it is still natural gas. It is a peak D if there's no new high this month. I don't know how I can do it by, by Friday. You're going above 10 again. But it is in play. Natural gas, the winter's coming. It should be rallying. So we're going to be watching this closely. I don't. We don't have a trade. We did have a trade in natural gas uh, uh, stock itself, or it's a, a stock that also has natural gas. We're out of that. I, I'm I'm quite prepared to get back in, but I haven't done that yet. We'll be watching this closely as well as the multinationals. Why? Let's go to MRO, which is Marathon Oil. Uh, look at that pullback from 33.24 back. <clears throat> The week of June the 3rd. Ay, ay, ay. Going from a peak C and pulling back. Monthly chart, Marathon Oil, Independent Exploration and Energy uh, Refining Company. Peak E top. And what I'd said is these should still be in play. <coughs> I personally wouldn't be putting money into it right now, any of these, because... I want to see higher highs and higher lows because something's happening here and it probably has to do with natural gas and it has to do at this moment with oil. So they are pulling back. And that goes with the XLE. Remember I did on Friday, I did the XLE. And so look at this. It's right on the Chapman Wave inside track support level in the weekly chart. If it starts to trade in the 68 or lower area, it says even the XLE, the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund, is having trouble in this dreaded H pattern. So let's keep that in mind. So there was some questions came in about oil. Can I just be looking at it, et cetera? Uh, very specifically, it was MRO, which we just did. <clears throat> Here's another question. So, so first of all, I must say, GT, thank you for all those charts you sent me over the weekend on all those uh, headlines around the country. Very interesting and very broad. More significantly is that there are cultural changes that are going on that we won't know until October, November, December. Whether or not these are, I wouldn't say one-offs, but I would say that they are less effective than uh, one would think or whether that's very important, we won't know. But yes, there are some things going on that are very important. And we'll talk about that later. But the question came in, could I look, where was it? Goldman Sachs. <coughs> oh, this is terrible. I apologize for this. It sounded, I was okay last night. But uh, evidently the voice is still very, very scratchy. <coughs> now, within the context of uh, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, I consider that when the next big phase of the move to the upside, look at this chart of Goldman Sachs. Look at this monthly chart. Peak E, Goldman Sachs, trading today at 295, uh, up a dollar. It's had a smash over the last week from the uh, 330 level down to 295. I, I'd say that there's, there's a really good chance that in the next big move to the upside, whenever it occurs, That'll be the time that Goldman Sachs probably has pretty much got all its eggs together and it becomes a trading company once again like it was. Remember when it made all those fantastic moves uh, way back? Let me show you this Goldman Sachs right here. I once did a webinar on Goldman Sachs from the 1920s when they were, became an IPO, they became a public company. So this move going to the high of 2007 at 250.07 October of 2007, and then a little bit of a plunge down to 47.41, March of uh, 2000. No, actually, this was 2008. 
Uh, that was November of 2008. And then it went to 275 in 2018, March, and then pulled back to December to 151. Ran up to peak D, went to 130.85 in March of 2020, and ran to the most recent high of in you know, November of this past year, 426.16. <clears throat> and here it is at 296. Ugh. Can't get away from that scratchiness, that little irritation, that dryness. So we'll see what happens because if at any point in 2022 it starts to trade at 278, that would be a very, very negative thing. But if in the meantime it has a decent rally, that rally has to go all the way to 360. I don't see, I don't see yet what's going to take it to 360. So the question was, when do we look at the brokers? When do we look at uh, at uh, the IAA? When do we look at Schwab? When do we look at Goldman Sachs? And my answer is they're all doing different things. The IAI has pulled back, but it, it looks a little bit better than Goldman Sachs, Charles Schwab. <coughs> Charles Schwab also has not such a bad uh, chart pattern, but this at 72.15 right now, it needs to hold 65. Anytime in September, October, if it starts to trade under 65, look at this chart, Chapman Way's falling X formation, hasn't been able to break above it. If it's able to get to 76, it's at 72 right now. Then, then it could test the double top, the 77.41. So all of this says, keep cash. <coughs> Speak for about two seconds and cough for three seconds. Ja. So keep cash because it's really important in this time frame to have a kitty to be able to say, I'm ready for when I finally see that, that's the person talking, that low that says to me, now I can put a lot more money to work. I can start slowly and then just keep adding because the market should make higher highs. At this particular point, we're looking at balance. I believe the best way to trade in this particular state is to put less money to work. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're if you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We're back. The S&P is up. The E-Mini is up 34. <laughs> The 3,704, it did hit that 200-period moving average. I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. <clears throat> if the market keeps acting like this, with all these kind of skeptical pullbacks and skeptical rallies, but making new recovery highs all day, that to me is the perfect situation for at least a rebound that can have the 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 uh, the bears reluctantly start to cover and they're going to wait and they're going to wait and the bulls are not going to come in right away you can see how scary it is i mean it was scary oh very scary yesterday it was scary every every other day this past week so the ideal situation is to break above but what level and I would say 3742-ish, somewhere around there, on the E-mini, if it's able to get to that level, I think at least in the very near term, you will have some people start to say, hey, 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 maybe we're so oversold that we can rally. That's kind of what I'm looking at. That's the reason why for subscribers of opening call, I said over the weekend when I did my 50-minute uh, uh, video overview, I said, you know, we don't have to put much money to work. We're just going to step in. We'll step into the singles of the ETFs on Monday, if possible. And if it works, we'll add double or triples. But we'll still keep our cash, a big cash position, and just try to go on, as we've done before, a percentage, a really nice percentage gain, and just take it off. And we can keep doing that. And one of the reasons why I feel strongly <clears throat> that this – this phase of the bear, bear market, I think we're getting closer and closer to uh, the area where suddenly the word recession starts to be discussed a lot more as if we're in a recession. I don't know what the reason is for them not calling this a recession because technically they've always done that after two quarters uh, of, of negative earnings. Uh, I just don't understand what, what's going on here or, or just negative projections altogether. You can see every one of these things. Look at the semiconductors trying to rally today up 291 at 193.04. Uh, not a, look, this is a, a terrible little pattern right at the bottom here, but the day is young. If we can close into that bar in the semis, it says, great, finally the semis are showing a little bit of strength. So this is all very selective. And what I'm saying is the monthly charts are suggesting very strongly that we aren't quite done on the downside. I say quite, meaning in time, in price, what happens next is going to be so important. The higher you can go, uh, Jimmy says, election year, Basil, uh, messaging, redefine anything that doesn't fit the script. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's politics. We, that's what, you know, I've been around long enough to see that. Most importantly, what I am looking for is how does gold react? So the semiconductors is the one thing. That's part of the general market. 
But gold, you see, the whole influence of the dollar in terms of the overall currencies, all the different currencies, is suggesting that the dollar is still the place to be internationally. We also know, <laughs> look at this chart from 89.21, back in, <coughs> ay, ay, ay. Back in uh, 2021, from 89 to the 114, 100, I mean, this is incredible. You know, currencies don't just change on a dime. Look at this EUR, USD. Look at the euro dollar. Look at this. Just trying to get off the low today. Look at that monthly chart. It looks like a swan dive, right? Oh. Now, why do they call it a swan dive? I've never seen a swan dive like that. Anyway. But look at the USD JPY, and this has been the clue to me to say there's a chance that the dollar is just getting a little bit toppy here, and therefore we've got to watch these counter trend things. That's what I was talking before. If we've got to watch the T the TLT, we've got to watch the the dollar. We've got to watch the uh, Japanese yen currency pair with the US dollar Japanese yen. Why? Because it has this inside. Rectangle formation with the long-legged doji candle, not quite a doji, but a long-legged candle. It gives you very clear parameters. And unlike the dollar, it hasn't made a new recovery high. It's just a little bit off at 144.67. The high was just under 146. It was 145.90 <clears throat> four sessions ago. But you see the long-legged doji in the weekly. And that's just saying to me, just keep an eye on a shorter term, because if the dollar, which could still make a leg D, but I think it's getting a little bit toppy here, all the technicals are fantastic. I, only the on-balance volume, and you'd only see that if you go to the UUP, look, the on-balance volume is extremely overbought. But the stochastics at 95%, that's fantastic. So I'm saying don't get carried away. I'm only treating this as a potential bounce that could become a little bit more, it could be actually become a rally, a counter trade rally in the market. But let's just go step by step because <laughs> stepping in front of a train, especially when you're in the tunnel and there's a light coming, that isn't the light at the end of the tunnel, that is the train coming. So you've got to be very, very nimble, very careful. So I'm saying that we're going to be watching this because you remember silver was acting so much better than gold. Today it's acting very nicely. It's up 28 cents at 18.75. But look at this. Made a peak C1, C2 double top in the daily. The weekly chart's making lower lows and lower highs. The monthly chart has got this one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, which is already extended. So even though the chart pattern is a little bit better price-wise, and I looked at CDE, which is Core Mining Inc., Looked great, made a peak D the other day at about in the 340s. Plummets down to the 260s, and here it is at 291. Not a bad session today. So, be watching. There's some stocks that are, we will be watching closely, certainly for subscribers to my opening call. And what I would love to do is once again just look at the um, maybe either go to the, to the to the lead stock in a sector. Or go to a stock that follows, like uh, CDE, um, has a little bit of a chart pattern like silver, not quite as good as silver in terms of patterns themselves. But I just try to find a very low price stock that can move in a nice percentage <clears throat> without putting too much money to work. That's really to be the most important thing. So, uh, question is uh, okay. TT calls, got that, got that, got that, did the TLT, did that, did that. Yeah, so yeah, another question came in. Um, where was it? Is Caterpillar, is Caterpillar still on your list of the cyclicals? It was a, yeah, is Caterpillar still on the list of cyclicals you would look at if there was a big market turnaround? No, not at this point. It's there for a balance, but Caterpillar is too deep a cyclical. I'm looking for a counter trend bounce now. And in fact, we will know today at the end of the day whether or not this is a bounce that's impacting stocks in the Dow itself that are economically sensitive 
you know, Home Depot is up 5.78 at 272, but that's not a leg D, trough D. This is not a great looking chart. So all I'm saying is that even if there was the best of intentions in this market, that to move up very sharply, there are so many stocks that are very, very important that are, that are acting so weakly, like the XLF. What's with that? Look at this XLF, almost a full dreaded H pattern <clears throat> in the weekly chart, going from the week of the 15th of July at 30.37, running to 36, very nice, almost a 20% move, and then giving almost all of it back. It's at 30.74 right now. So, the the question has it has been for me what rally would it take for you to switch from being a bear <coughs> to stop coughing and become a bull <coughs> and i have to say it's a whole series of things that are going to have to, ha have to happen but most importantly it will be this major thing where at some point you will get the volatility index yeah, let's look at that. So you see this. You see the, the you see this trend line. You see the way the volatility index down, today is down a dollar thirty three. Look at that, thirty point ninety three, with the potential peak D right here. When I see the volatility, I I don't know the price because each one's so different. Look, uh, back in March of twenty twenty, at that really major low, the the VIX went to eighty five point forty four. That's coronavirus. Business, the Fed, everything was again against the market. I don't know if we've had so many uh, tests of this trend line that we've used up a lot of the downside energy, meaning the upside energy in the VIX index. But if I see the VIX start to go into the 43-44 area, that's where I'll be looking at all these different uh, sectors very, very closely because that's where we might get a rally that actually lasts uh, it's maybe six to eight weeks, and that'll be really important. How it comes about, I don't know. But this is different. This is just uh, uh, the wear and tear of the downside has run its course, and now you're going to get a counter trend rally if it works, and we'll see. So let's just go back to the E mini. We want to look at over here. So this is now either a, this is E slash B, F slash C. I'm going to call it a C for now because it's holding so nicely. And it's walking above the 200 period moving average. It's walking First above. Subscribers also get a 30 day yeah. money back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24 7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So what I was saying is that uh, this is uh, the one-minute chart, F slash C, we've got right over here. But it's it's doing what we were discussing before. Very quiet, moving a little bit higher. The pullbacks are modest. Uh, we'll see what happens. Will there be another sudden uh, pullback? So the Dow now, which is up 275, is actually only up uh, 120 points. Uh, that's a, that'll be a big difference. That'll say to me, ah, oh, oh, you're you're early, and uh, uh, any rally now has to it, it has to be. You need some fundamentals, and the, I don't hear any, I don't hear any fundamentals that are actually helping. Uh, so uh, within that within that context. Let's just do this as we're about to wrap up today. And, of course, everyone in Florida, we're, really, we're, we're praying for you. We're hoping that everything just works out the best it possibly can. TFNA might have to close shop uh, today. We'll see. It's up to them. Uh, we, we'll, we'll certainly be on standby. We'll be ready to go tomorrow. But in the meantime, safe, 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 uh, safety for everyone in, in Florida and especially for TFNN. Let's see what happens if the Dow is able to get to the 29.690s today at the, uh, the close. That will be really important and a follow-through day tomorrow. And with that, I'm listening to – okay. So we've just got a moment to go. And the volatility index, which is now 31.07 – if instead of going up into the 3150s or higher, starts to pull back and actually gets to 2965 or 2945, 
as the market is moving higher, that will say, great, finally we can have a decent up close and a potential follow through tomorrow. We'll see what happens. I'm watching this Chapman Wave inside track in the VIX index, uh, weekly chart, and I want to see it pull back sharply as it has done almost every other time. The best music I can say is, I'm sorry for the throat action today. I thought it was going to be good. Uh, this morning was doing fine. <laughs> But we'll see what happens. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Hope everyone's safe down in front of the farm. Anyone with a, with a storm coming up, please.